And now we're joined by Justin Cena head coach Jeremy Tayson to discuss the upcoming season. Jeremy, thanks for joining me. Yeah, my pleasure. It's always good to be here and talk baseball. So with that, let's get let's go right into this. Um, you guys have your schedule is on Max Preps. I've seen it. You guys are playing four non-league games. You open up at St. Helena. Um, talk a little about the opener. Yeah, um, Doc and I have been playing each other since I took over as Justin's head coach, and it's a nice little natural rivalry that I know goes back before you know him or I have uh, been at the helm, and it's a nice local rivalry to, to get the season started. So we're we're looking forward to seeing them at their place. It's a beautiful little facility they have there and to get a lock horns with them. I know our kids are chomping at the bit to get down there. And then obviously league play begins this, the, right after that. You guys host Vintage in your home opener. That's going to be a high emotion home opener. Talk a little bit about that. Um, I mean, your home opener is always the high emotion here, regardless of your opponent. I mean, playing the local schools, I think the BDL, everyone is kind of a, a natural rival, so to speak, especially with caliber of play that we anticipate seeing in our league. So getting that right out of the gate is going to be exciting. And to your point, um, yeah, emotional, but in a good way. It's it's good to lock horns with people right down the street. I think that's what the VVAL brings um, to the plate. So as far as your roster is concerned, you guys kind of have a lot of coming back. You're, you're, I'd say your top two returners are um, Nick Andrews and Noah Young, both of whom are, I will be covering tomorrow night for the football game. Um, talk a little bit more about your roster. Sure. I, I believe we returned 13 guys, um, most or many of whom had a or projected to have a pretty significant role last year. Uh, so anytime you return that many guys, I think we have eight seniors, too. So two junior, two seniors coming up from the JV level last year. So we're excited about who we have coming back for sure. Um, there's, there's a lot of depth there, a lot of versatility. That's something we pride ourselves on in our program is not pigeonholing guys into one or two positions at an early age. And um, hopefully we anticipate that being able to be shown off a little bit and just kind of plug and play, you know, who's our best nine right now and rotate through that. Um, I can give you names or talk through specific guys if you like, or. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Talk so um, yeah, Noah and Nick certainly project to, you know, they're our most experienced returning players. I think Noah's, one of the most talented players in our league and just a really seasoned and polished baseball player. I think a lot of people, it, it's really well known what he can do with the bat. Um, but I think a lot of people also overlook the other parts of his game. He's a really good outfielder. He can go get it with the best of them and he can even fill in on the infield if need be. And I'd, I'd take him home to home um, on the bases. He's, he's a fabulous base runner. He knows what he's doing, um, taking the angles and he's, he's got some foot speed to him too. So. Um, I could talk about him as a player all day. And I think Nick Andrews is as fundamental as a player as I've seen. He's a varsity um, impact guy as a freshman. On, on virtue of that, he, he, he's so competitive and so steady. He has the, the mental game of baseball down for sure. So those two guys as anchor points um, in our team uh, really will help us for sure. Um, some other guys coming back. Uh, Daniel Kelly, uh, second baseman, really just sound player. Um, and I think one of the benefits of um, COVID is a lot of the guys who play basketball who normally just go right from the gym to the baseball field, they've gotten some time to prepare. So him, Keith Benz, Jared Gardner, Ethan Jefferson, um, Robbie San Giacomo also plays basketball, but obviously he's playing um, football right now. Those guys are getting to prepare in a way for a baseball season they've never had before. So I anticipate that um, taking their already – strong games up to another level. Um, other guys, Max Zunz, I could talk about Max Zunz and David Elias, two arms that they, they have to lead the league in putting times in at the field. They, those guys are there hours on end. And when we couldn't share equipment, Max Zunz would literally throw the ball from the left field line to the center field and go pick the bucket up and throw it back. I can't say enough about um, Max and, and the work he's put in, in spite of the, the the circumstances and um, he's kind of brought David Elias and Madden Edwards, another very versatile and strong player along with them. And the three of them um, have really just shown us a really positive example of leadership and just work ethic. And I think that often gets overlooked. Um, Jackson Dan, a returning senior, really good uh, culture guy, brings a lot of really fun 
energy and he's got some bad speed. He can go get it in the outfield. And he's, I think one of the benefits of this format is you're going to see guys like Jackson who they're going to get a lot more opportunity to step up in game where normally they might not have. So I think um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do because he certainly worked his butt off as well. Perfect. So you kind of mentioned the whole COVID thing. How did, how was navigating that like for you guys? Can you talk a little about it? Like what you had to deal with and all sure. the. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the, the world part of it is, is well documented. It, it was tough and the uncertainty at the, you know, 15 days to slow the spread. And we were coming off one of the best infields I've seen in the last few years. And we were getting ready to play El Molino and it's kind of like, man, it's so surreal. And you know, we haven't played since. So um, I, I can't say enough about the student athletes. And I don't know if that's, it's, it's not specific to Justin Sienna, but that's the only context I know is the kids have shown that they will work in any fashion that they can to get um, the sports that they care and know about in. And our guys have been going really since June. I think we've had 250 small cohort or full on practices since June or workouts and um, They've done it with enthusiasm. They've done it with grit. They've done it with grace. And I can't say enough about how they've gone about it. We've, we've had practices where we couldn't share equipment. We've had practices where we only have three guys there for an hour and then another group of eights coming in and then another group's coming in and we've had any and all in between. And we're very grateful for that opportunity. I think our administration has done a, a great job to put us in the position to be able to maximize um, that opportunity in terms of getting the kids out and yeah, I mean, competitively, I, you know, I, I hope it helps us, but you know, baseball is a, a funny game and I, we're just grateful that we were got to do what we were able to do to the level we were able to do it. Yeah. It's great that baseball's coming back. Um, so now I want to turn to your coaching staff. I assume Mark Young, Deano, Pachette, they're all coming back. Uh, talk yeah. a little about your coaching staff and both levels if you could. Sure. Actually, all three levels. We have a freshman yeah. team this year, too. Um, so that's um, an exciting addition for many reasons. Um, Mark Young is just a great baseball guy. He has some professional baseball experience and he brings a uh, Southern California guy. So he brings some Southern California energy to our, our diamond, which is enjoyable. And he just has a really good passion for hitting and I think that that shows. I think one of the strengths of our program is we can swing the bats a little bit. So um, a lot of that credit is due to him. Diano, obviously a multiple time NCS champion in multiple sports at Justin Siena. So he brings that tie to our, our program and our school and just brings some good youthful energy and like he'll throw BP nine days in a row if he has to and they're all strikes. So that's as valuable as it gets right there. Um, a new addition to our staff um, is Sean Miller, who's a college counselor, um, and he is as positive and invigorating of a, as a person as we could have around. And what a shot in the arm he's been for us to have and bring some good positive energy, because as I was describing the practices before, like not it wasn't always baseball, right? We were, we're lifting weights outside, we're hitting off the tee for an hour and then sending them home. And he just brought so much energy and positivity and some really good baseball how-to. And I think the kids have really, um, they needed that to have that perspective in there. And um, he's also a lefty BP thrower. So now we can go from both sides. And Kurt Dunkel, um, <laughs> I was thinking about this before we got on, but this will be the first year since the nineties that a Dunkel will not be playing on a Justin Siena baseball team, which is crazy. Nolan who just graduated was the sixth of six. So, but we do have one in the dugout. So, um, uh, as we call him, he is just so good with pitchers. If, if you can throw a ball 90 feet, he's going to try to get you on the mound and somehow some way he turns them into legitimate strike throwers. So our, our pitching staff will be well stocked, especially in this, um, short kind of, uh, format, you know, pitching is going to be at a, at a premium when you get two, three game weeks with such a short ramp up. So I think that's something that the job Kurt does for us um, really benefits us. And then at the JV level, I know I've heard that Steve Meyer is back. Is that correct? And then um, sure, Steve. Rick yep. Romero. 
Uh, Rick, Rick is not with us um, this year, but Steve is in his, I think, 108th year coaching at Justin <laughs> Siena. He's been there since the start at all three levels. And with that comes not only the tie to the history and success the program has had, um, but also just a wealth of, of knowledge and insight. And he does such a great job. Um, he, he, he really puts a good effort and interest and execution in, in teaching the things the way the program wants to be taught. And it's so humbling to see a guy go about his business that way um, in the spirit of service. And um, at the, the head freshman coach is Andrew Olney, who is joining our program, who has some great tra travel ball experience from Show Cali. And Sam Alton will be floating around between them, who's been with the program since I took over. Um, I actually coached Sam at Sonoma High, and he was a really great pitcher going on to pitch at the Division One level at Middle Tennessee State. Interesting. Um, so now, like, what's this transition going to be like for, for your football guys, like going right into baseball? Like, have, is that something you guys have already worked out? Like, I know this is a, so, an unprecedented time, but you've got a lot of your guys playing football. Robbie, Noah, I mean, it, the list goes on. Sure. So um, we have four varsity guys, uh, Johnny Natuzzi, Robbie San Giacomo. Noah Young and Nick Andrews. And I think at the lower levels, it's probably upwards of um, 15, 18 guys between the two teams down there. And, you know, how we're handling it, you know, we play the day after the last game. So, you know, trade in your, your molded spikes for your metal ones. And, you know, I, our program motto is that athletes make play. So be an athlete and hit the ball and turn left a few times. So those, those guys are, have been diligent to make sure they're getting some swings and some throws in to the extent that, their schedule and bodies allow. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not necessarily worried. And, and in fact, I'm just more excited because we've been working with um, this group without them for a while. And we like what we see and just getting four more guys at the varsity level in, it's just going to help. And at the lower levels, it's just going to round out. So those guys, I mean, the freshmen who've been in hybrid and now our entire campus is back um, together. They, they're going to get to see like, oh man, like we, we get to see the rest of our teammates, the guys that we're going to play baseball with and make memories in high school. We get to see those guys. So I'm excited for them for that. Yeah. Um, interesting that the day after the American Canyon game, they're playing baseball. That's just crazy to me. I've never seen this before. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> and then boom, league play. So also let's talk about that. Other coaches have said that, you know, every pitch, every pop every play is going to be that much more intensified do you feel that sure. with this league, league league season since that's really all you guys are playing for yeah i mean i i would say that given the competitive nature of the vval that that's not necessarily so much different i think um you know this is really only the second year of vval baseball since last year we didn't quite make it to that yet so i think um VBAL is good, man. I think everyone can go 12 and 0, and I think everyone can go 0 and 12, and everything in between. There, there's no, there's no gimmies on the schedule. I, I got a lot of respect for every program. Just a lot of good, rich baseball traditions in, in all seven of our schools there. So I think that the league's just it's going to be fun. It's it's going to be a lot of fun for everyone to to lock horns with each other and um, you know last man up there, I guess. So another thing, like I've heard mixed things about basketball and whether or not it's happening. Um, how is that going to work with you guys with having multiple athletes? Sure. So we are allowing multi-sport athletes in our school. Um, I think what we set out to specifically with basketball, Coach Cranucci and I, who have a great working relationship and friendship, um, it's like we, we want to make sure that the kids who are putting in the, the amount of effort I described earlier you know, they get some some reward and validation for, you know, sticking through it. And so we, you know, we, we, we found a way to make it work. There's no doubt about it. I think him and I have probably spent way too many hours scheduling and programming and all that for the original iteration, and iteration two and iteration 12 and on and on and on. So um, we, we kind of have everyone on an individual plan that makes sense based on um, you know where they're at and, and that kind of stuff so I, I think what coach Granucci said it best when he 
want to deliver it's going to be a really unique experience so let's make it as as fun and exciting and worthwhile as possible so that's kind of been the the company line um, we've adopted that's good because i've heard you know from other from the other schools like that they're making their kids only play one sport and i figured that you guys since you're a, a small small school in the league you would have to find a way around that so that's good that you yeah. guys are going to let the kids play multiple sports yeah, for sure. I, I, I don't think our numbers would be affected so much if we had to, you know, lock them into one. I think it was just more of just a gesture of good faith, particularly to the seniors to make a, a, a student athlete have to pick in their senior year in their last eight weeks or whatever just didn't sit right um, with us. And we were because of some of the things we're able to do, we we're able to maximize that that opportunity. Gotcha. So now can you talk about a little bit about your other non-league games? We've been over St. Helena. Um, I know, who else are you guys playing in the non-league? Sure. So we got Montgomery, um, Zach Ward over there. Him and I have um, had a little bit of a scrimmage partnership, and he runs the Redbirds, and um, I'm involved with Sonoma Stack. So we've always had a good relationship for over a decade. So um, their bye week was our bye. So it's like, hey, let's play um, adjoining county. And um, St. Uh, St. Vincent's, Petaluma, um, Spencer over there uh, just took over the program and we have a mutual friend. And so we've been talking a lot and I think it's good to, have, you know, you just saw the football game, right? So I think it's a good oh, yeah. natural um, opponent to, to build on for sure. So we were able to, to get them. And then St. Pat's is a, a nice local rivalry, right? So it was really good for us to get them. They got us on opening day last year. So we're happy to host them and um, you know put our best foot forward there. And I feel like I'm missing one. I think that you only get four, don't you? So same five. Only, yeah. Oh, you have five. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Vallejo. Oh, Vallejo. So yeah, Vallejo. Um, a lot of our students come from Vallejo. So they know a lot of the, the kids at Vallejo High. So um, I think when we were putting together our non-league schedule, we were looking at like, like one, who can we play? Who's playing, right? Some of the other leagues are already going. And I think even some of the MEL schools are like, they're ending like next week, something like that. So then, then it was like, okay, where, where can we have the most meaningful and fun, you know, playoff like experiences, you know, with some, some natural rivalries or some where the kids know some of the kids on the other teams or whatever. So Vallejo was yeah, in our other buy. And then my last question here is obviously there was no travel ball statewide at all last year. You're obviously you being the head of the Sonoma stack. Um, what do you think, do you think that has any impact on the play this season? Or do you think it's going to, as time goes on, like it's, it'll just be like normal baseball again? Um, that's hard to say. Uh, to, to your point, two years ago, I think I had coached in 75 plus games that year. And let, you know, right now I'm at, zero in 2021 and six in 2020. So yeah, I think you're going to see some different types of games, but I think once people settle in, you know, the game is the game and the kids are talented and, and level headed and, you know, they, they're excited to play. So I think you'll, you'll see good baseball. You might see a lot more crooked numbers on, on some of these days, but you know, that's, that's good for the hitting coach. So um, I, I'm not, I'm curious to see what some of the play is early on, but at the end of the day, to your point, there's going to be a lot of emotion. There's going to be a lot of whatever, and that's not really any different, right? We're trying to hone that anyways. So, um, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Um, I'll 